So the Tory gate is almost finished, but there are a few more things I want to do. Let's start off by warping these middle columns here a little bit. If you look in the picture, you will see that they are not perfectly shaped. We are going to do this in sculpting mode, but first let's apply our mirror modifier. Come here to the arrow and then click apply. Now let's go into the sculpting mode, select our grab brush. Let's bring up the radius a little bit more and just start pulling away at the model a little bit. Just until you get a shape that you want. The motto in life is nothing is perfect. So your models will always look better with a little bit of imperfections to them. Just be careful not to make it too extreme. Something like that. You could also do the same to these smaller columns if you wanted to. Another thing you can do is tidy up this scene collection here. As you can see, we've been doing a lot of copy and pasting, so everything is just called cube or cylinder. I won't do this in this tutorial video, but you're more than welcome to do this if you want to make things a little bit more understandable. Let's now work on applying the materials for our Tory gate. Let's start off with the wood. I'm going to select these middle columns here and create a new material and call it wood. Let's first shade smooth our columns. And now let's switch over to the shading tab. Let's apply our wood texture and apply a mix RGB node to give us a bit of a reddish orange color along with our wood texture. So find your texture and then drag it in to your node editor. Or you can create an image texture node and browse for your texture that way. I'm just going to create a mix RGB node. Connect the color into color one and then this color into base color. I'm going to make color 2 a bit of a reddish orangey color. Something like that, just in the middle there. You can also change the factor here. So if we go into layout view, let's see what this looks like in material preview mode. And you don't have to use this wood texture, you could use any texture you want. Seems all right so far. Of course, if there were any other issues with it, you could always dive into UV editing and clear up the UVs and mark seams where you need seams. You could also use texture painting. So although we don't need to do it for this video, I'm just gonna show you anyway, just in case you're using a texture and you get a nasty seam on one side. So let's pretend we had a seam going down right here. If you jump into texture paint, and then select the clone brush over here. And let's just bring down the radius. If you control click on an area, it will move the origin points to that area. And now if you paint, it will paint that selection. So this is really cool because you can literally cover up any nasty seams using this. So that's just a little note for the future, or if you need to use it for your current texture. I am now going to make a slight variation of this material to put on our beams. Let's select the beams and create another new material and call it wood two. I'm gonna go back into the shading tab and if we just select our middle columns here and just copy all of the nodes we had before and move them over to our wood two, 
material. I'm just going to delete the other nodes at the back. So we essentially just copy and paste everything across. But now because this is a separate material, we can just change the color just a little bit. Just gives the mesh a little bit more texture variation. Back in the layout tab, I'm just going to select the middle columns. With the mouse over this browser here for the material, hold down the shift key and drag from the icon with the wood material selected and just start moving it over these sloped parts here. So as we were doing that, I just realized we forgot to add the slope part at the ends here. So I'm just going to grab one of our slope shapes here, move it on the inside, rotate by 180 degrees, move that in, do the same for over here, oh, X axes, rotate Z axes 180 degrees. And let's just take those, copy and paste them over here. So it's bound to happen that you forget some things. Let's just also add this beam texture to our bottom beam here. I'm going to create a third material and call it wood three. So we're just going to do it of these top parts of the gate here. So with this shape selected, let's click new, wood three, shading tab. Let's just clear out these nodes here and let's just go to our middle column, copy the node network back to this shape here for wood three, paste. Let's just give this a slightly different color. I might make it a little bit darker. And we'll give this part here um, the same material. So we'll just shift drag onto there. Let's also give our smaller cylinders here the same uh, wood texture. And then with the beam selected, let's give the wood two textures to these cylinder parts here and to our beam here. Now let's create the roof material. Select the roof, create a material, call it roof, and let's jump into the shading tab. So we don't have a texture for our roof, and I have set this tutorial up like this on purpose. We are going to dive into Blender's material editor a bit more to show you how we can make a roof-like texture just from the material editor alone. So in the node editor, shift A to get to the add menu, and then search for brick texture. This is going to give us our brick pattern. If I connect the color output to the base color input, you can see we're given a brick style here. But let's adjust these parameters. Change the offset to zero to make the bricks look a bit cleaner. I'm also going to set the brick width to 0 0.5, the row height to 0 0.09, the scale to 3.8, the mortar size to 0 0.02 and the mortar smooth to 0 0.9. However, you can set this up any way you want. Let's change the colors around to get a bit more of a greener look to our roof here. I think we want something within the kind of green and blue direction.
I'm also going to make the mortar a little bit lighter, but not too much. Something like that will do for now. At this point I pretty much have my own Tory gate colour scheme, which comes away from the reference image a bit, but this is the part where you can style it the way you want it to be. If I wanted to be a perfectionist, then I would probably end up making another 10 videos just to show you how we can make this exactly like the reference image. But we'll keep things simple for now. I'm also going to create a bump node. And connect the normal to the normal here. And connect the factor of the brick texture to the height of the bump node. You can see it just gives our roof a little bit more depth, but it's a bit strong. So let's just bring it down a little bit. Something like that. Let's create a second roof material for our smaller roofs here. Select them, create a new material and call it roof two. Delete the nodes we have in there. Come back to the roof. Control C to copy. Back to our smaller roofs. Control V to paste. As you can see, the material initially doesn't really look good on these smaller roofs. So we'll change these around. Change the row height to 0.2 and the scale to 2. I'm also just going to grab in face select these bottom faces here. I'm going to create a new material and let's select our wood 2 material and assign it. So that covers the materials for our Tory gate. So these tutorial videos have covered a lot of things that you can use on your own to make this Tory gate look a lot better if you wanted it to. We could also take what we've learned previously to render out our gate. So I could come back into object mode, hide our reference image here. I can create a area light and move this over here. Go into rendered mode, turn up the power, we can adjust the color a bit if we want. And I can create a camera. And then we can find a view that we want our render to snapshot. And once we find a good view, we can do Control, Alt, and Zero on the number pad. To move the camera to our current view. It's a little bit cut out so I'm just going to move over here a bit more and do it again. There we go. And then we can render the image. Of course you could also add a background here if you wanted to um, or even more lighting effects. So before I end this intermediate tutorial series I want to explain a couple of things. There are probably over a hundred ways we could have built this gate, and that is the beauty of 3D modelling. There are many ways to approach one thing, or another way to look at it is there are many solutions to one problem. You play around with the software and you learn the way that is best for you. Another thing I want to say, which I'm going to be very honest with you, I don't actually use Blender's Material Editor much and I don't usually grab textures from online. I only did this for the tutorial series so that everyone could follow along as easily as possible. So that brings up the main question, I guess. What do I use for materials? I actually use another software package called Substance Designer to create my materials. And I will definitely make a tutorial series about that at some point. With Substance Designer you can create whatever material you want and then apply that to your 3D models. With Substance Designer materials I could have probably made this Tory gate look real. And that brings up another reality about the world of 3D modelling. 
There may be times where you have to venture out of Blender to use other software packages to give you the best results possible. Blender is an incredible tool, but it cannot do everything. If I wanted to create a game, for example, I personally would use Blender for the 3D modeling, Substance Designer for the materials, Marvelous Design and ZBrush for clothing and high detailed soft surface modeling, and the Unreal Engine, or you could use Unity, for the level design and game building. But that is what suits me. You could become a lot better than me in Blender and achieve the best results possible using just Blender. And this software is improving rapidly. With many more companies joining the Blender Development Fund, like Microsoft for example, it is exciting to watch it grow and see where it could be a year from now. So thank you for following along with these tutorial series. I really hope these have helped you become a more independent 3D modeler. However, there is still much more to learn. And like most things in life, after the tutorial is when the real learning begins. So now you are on your own to create whatever 3D model you like. I will continue to release more Blender tutorial videos to help you and dive into other areas of the software, but I may break them up into singular videos rather than doing a full tutorial series. So with that, the intermediate tutorial series is complete. Get creating, have fun, and I will see you soon.